Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about your different options for running your smart home software, whether it be Raspbian and Linux or Docker. There's all sorts of options available, and they're not going to break the bank, and that's what you're really going to like. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, we're going to talk about several options here. Now, one of them you're probably well familiar with, and you may have been either looking at or have got one or two up and running, or if you're like me, you got about five running. Now, that's going to be the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is probably one of the more well-known options, and it's also one of the most affordable because you can get into a either a Raspberry Pi, well, the three Bs or the, I'm sorry, the Raspberry Pi threes or the four Bs are about the same price point. Now, the flip side here is at least with the Raspberry Pi fours, you've got to choose your memory up front. So that's a case of you've got a choice of one, two, four, or now they've got an eight gig model and that's soldered onto the motherboard. You're not going to be able to replace that. Now, the other option to look at, you've seen me talk about this in some of the videos, and this is the Intel Celeron. Well, it's an Intel NUC. This happens to be the Celeron. They've got an i3, an i5, i7, even if you get up to the 10th generation NUC, in which you're getting, getting well over $1,000. But the nice thing is, is this one, the Celeron here, is not going to break the bank because this one you're looking about $130 on Amazon. Now, that's a bare bones starter. You're going to have to add a couple things. You're going to have to add memory to it, and you're going to have to add a hard drive. Now, you've got the choice of either running with an SSD or putting in a hard drive. And for the money, I'd probably go for a hard drive because it's depending on how much accessing of the, the media you're going to do. If you're running something like notebook or where you've got a, a local database running and you're pulling information like your own personal wiki or or what have you that is something that you, you're really going to be thrashing it and and uh, solid state memory at least from my experience is not really good for for high drive situations it's good for the experience i have is good for starting up say windows you want it to be windows like you punch the button and bang windows is up it's good for that but in terms of heavy disk write operations, I don't know that it's there yet. It probably will be. And those who are probably more versed on SSDs than I am probably have ways to to do that. But I'm trying to keep things affordable. Now, with the Raspberry Pi, and let's go back to that one, you can see here what you've got to work with is you've got to plug in an SSD. And let's go ahead and, and move this around here. I mean, it's great. It's got two USB 3, two USB 0 ports. The Raspberry Pi 4 has got a gig Ethernet. But the downside is right there is you've got to put an SD card in it to boot from. Now, before you start sending me hate mail saying, well, but you can boot from USB. Yes, but that feature just got released. It's a firmware upgrade. But then the downside is you're now going to be tying up one of your USB ports. So that is, well, I don't know where that one came from the downside is that you yes you can add more usb ports to it i would only do that if you are going to use a powered usb hub because i you want to be considerate of how much power you're pulling through there and it only has four ports for a reason you want to make sure you're not pulling a lot of power through it now for example on my raspberry pi which mine's a three, I've got two external hard drives. I'm running Open Media Vault, but I didn't tap those directly into the ports on the side of the Raspberry Pi. I went with a powered hub, so I'm powering the two external USB drives off of that, so I'm not taxing the power supply for the Raspberry Pi. 
So that is something that, that you need to consider. So over time, you could have a lot of wiring just kind of mushrooming, where with the Intel Celeron, everything on a basic install is going to be internal. Your, if you're booting from uh, an SD situation or SSD or in your memory, you can change all that. That's basically, this is a box for you to, uh, to work on. So really, you have a lot of options here. Now, you can start in another reason. Let me finish one thought before I go to another. So you, you, you've got a lot of ways you can go. You can always upgrade it to fit your needs. Now, when you're installing to this, you have the challenge of having to get the image into there somehow. And you've, had, you've already seen me do a couple of videos where I talk about the IOD 2541. Now, this is a great device, not that expensive. I did put a 500 gig SSD in mine just to keep it with plenty of storage for the different IO, not ISO images rather. So that's something that, as you can see, it's not really just a, a, a quick do this or do the other situation. Now, the advantages of going with the Intel NUC is you can experience on a small platform, understandably, but you can get experience of the Raspberry Pi full GUI desktop. And if you're going to be doing a lot of that, but you don't want to get an Intel NUC, that's when you need to start looking at either the 4 gig Raspberry Pi 4 or possibly the 8. Right now, the 8s are carrying a little bit of premium. But again, that's your decision. It's I've got plenty of 1 and 2 gig Raspberry Pi 4s, and I've got several uh, 3Bs. So that is something that you, you can always, you, know, you can't upgrade the onboard memory like you can with the Intel NUC. Now, something to consider, and this is a reason why you would, another reason why you would look at going to the Intel NUC is depending on where you're getting into with the Raspberry Pis, you may find some containers that don't support the ARM architecture. I've already gotten into one of these and I didn't pick up on the, the nuances of the tags and then I actually was talking to the support people for one of the uh, containers and then they found out oh we don't support Raspberry Pi well it loaded and it only started to bomb when it was going to configure and hence why it was looking for some things that it wasn't there so that's a reason why you might look at the the Intel NUC because it does give you some options and depending on how hard you're pushing things you may want to go beyond the Celeron and look at going to like the i3, the i5, i7. Again, you can put a lot of money into it, but my whole thought process with going into the Intel Nook was addressing a issue where I couldn't run some of the containers that I wanted to try in Docker. You may find, depending on how active your smart home is, that it may be overtaxing the Raspberry Pi. And that's where really with the 4, it became pretty much a requirement that you had to put it in a case that it needed to have a fan in it so that you could have the airflow and keep it cool and even then when doing that you wanted to make sure you put the different chips on there or the heat sinks rather I call them chips and that's where you help pull that heat off the chips because if you don't then what you're looking at is it's going to start getting hotter, it's going to start throttling, so the performance is not going to be the best it can be. Either way, when you're looking at that kind of situation, if you're running part of your smart home and you always want those to be available, I would definitely put this on some sort of uh, medium end uh, UPS, so that it doesn't have to be a fancy one, but if you have power going off and on and where I live in the Midwest, unfortunately, I'm dealing with a power company that I lose power about once a month. Sometimes it's just for a few seconds. More often as not, it's for at least an hour. And there was one day in the past year, it was, I was down for about three and a half days. So you want to, you don't want to try to run for an extended period of time on a UPS, but basically it's going to give you enough time that it gets you through some of the shorter power outages but 
I'll give you the time and hopefully access that you can get in to do a controlled shutdown instead of just pulling the plug because Windows and Linux both, depending on what they're doing, can be a little touchy for just an abrupt power off. So you want to try to avoid that if you can. But as you see, there's there's several things to think through. There's no one right or, or a wrong decision. So whether you do the Intel NUC, whether it's the Celeron or one of the uh, I processors, if you look at the Raspberry Pi 4, and you may find that you're going to have a collection of both of these. And that's kind of where I'm ending up because I, sometimes I need a little bit of both, but I like having the option of having the different platforms. And plus, if you have been wanting to learn Linux and haven't really gotten your, your toes in the water yet, the Raspberry Pi is a great way to do it because you can't mess it up. Worst case, if you get something corrupted, you re-image the SD, and you're done. You reboot and go on. So this presents a lot of learning potential, so especially if you're wanting to look at getting into the IT field or move into more of a technical role in the company you're in, knowing how to set up Linux, even at a base level, will put you a step ahead of somebody who maybe have never seen it before. And the Intel NUC is an option where you can do Linux or Windows. Now, supposedly you can run Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi. It's got to be very stripped. I haven't tried that yet, but I can't see where the Raspberry Pi can begin to compete with an Intel NUC or something of that area. So anyway, I've rambled on long enough. You, you've got an idea of what to look at. So basically, Intel NUC, everything is inside the box for the most part. With the Raspberry Pi, you're going to have everything outside. Your memory choices are limited on the Raspberry Pi. Where with the Intel NUC, you can always change that out. You can have the option of having an SSD or a hard drive on the Intel NUC, where the Raspberry Pi, it's always going to be an external drive. You have the SD card you boot from that will give you some storage. But again, you, you know, you, if you start putting a very large one in, you're really going to be putting a lot of money in that. And SD cards typically don't hold up well to a lot of heavy read-write cycles. So you'd be replacing that chip on a periodic basis at least that's my view of it so it's you know think through what you want to do you can always start with a raspberry pi and then move on up to an intel NUC. again no right or wrong options and you can even go to the larger uh, low-end servers and things like that but those ones that's when you start getting into fans you may have to have more than one power cable running to it and your significant other or partner may not want that kind of st stuff sitting up in the front of the house so with the Raspberry Pis and the Intel NUCs, you can have them up and kind of have them over on the side of a bookshelf and nobody may really know. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos to the, on the screen that are to the right or to the left that are the next steps to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you the next time. Take care.